I never really thought about that um, in comparison to my everyday shoe. How do I treat myself? Um, I do. I, like I said, I, I beat myself up. I never really sit down and, and all the time and, and take care of myself like I did today, like I did with this shoe, like with these shoes. But I, I keep going. I keep going. I'm here. <laughs> when like everybody, I'm, I'm a little fucked up. <laughs> Look at these shoes. Look at this. I'm a little fucked up. A little beat up. You need, need a little super glue. But yeah. This we is me at 48. These shoes represent me. <laughs> you look, you look great. <laughs>
so um but for the most part i was happy i was happy in school wasn't the best student but i loved the extracurricular activities i loved my friends and uh yeah Three pieces of advice that I would give to a family going through a divorce. Uh, well, make sure you tell your kids that it's not because of them. Um, and which some children, I knew it wasn't in my situation, but some, some kids feel like it, it's because of them. Um, so make sure you let them know that you're still a family. Um, Another thing, let's see. Try not to distract your kids with like, giving them presents and stuff. Just actually be honest and, and, and upfront and, and, and confront the problem. Don't, don't try to distract. And a uh, third thing I would recommend Try not to get a divorce, you know? <laughs> <laughs> if you could help it. If you could. <laughs> try, not, try not to get a damn divorce in the first place. If, if possible. <laughs> if possible. No, but seriously, it's, um, it was rough, but I made it through. I turned to the clubs. <laughs> Let's just say that. I turned to going out at a very young age. Looking back, would you say those years affected your developmental years? Uh, yeah, I would definitely say it, it did because when I was going out to the clubs, when I was sneaking out and saying I'm gonna spend the night at my friend Mark's house and ended up at tracks down in Southeast, I was probably exposed to a lot more than I would have normally been exposed to if I hadn't have tried to like escape or run away to, you know what I mean? To go down to DC. What was Southeast like back in the day? It was rough. Um, Southeast had like, it was, it wasn't as developed, or wasn't developed really pretty much at all. Um, the area that we would go get our weed from was 302. Sometimes you would get oregano. <laughs> um, you park in front of these clubs. There were clubs called The Edge. Um, there was Tracks, which was my first club. Um, Capital Ballroom, which turned into Nation. Um, and it was, it was rough down there. They had like some CD clubs and CD sex clubs and go-go clubs and stuff. Sex work is work. Um, and yeah, I was pretty much exposed to that too, like at a very, very young age and, uh, grew up, I, you know, I would hate to compare myself to Drew, Drew Barrymore, but... <laughs> I was in the Studio 54 of, of DC, pretty much. I was out there. But yeah, uh, Southeast was a, was a wild spot. Would you say that freedom empowered your identif identity as in who you are now? Yeah, yeah, I would. I would say I have a more free spirit because of it. And because of that, I've, I've wanted to travel and be more free, you know what I mean? I wanted to, I want to experience more because of it. I didn't know this toothbrush is getting it. <laughs> this toothbrush is killing it.
some of these spots are just gonna just gonna have to stay. Some of this is gonna have to stay dirty. <laughs> I'm gonna hold this so you can really go off. Go okay. off. <laughs> I gotta get new laces. Look at this. And look at this. Mm. Mm. These shoes have been run through. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to be a DJ? To be a DJ means you have three things, a good uh, ear for music, a good mixing ability, and a good sense of what the crowd wants. You yeah, have to break that down for me. So a good ear for music is what you like to play, what's in, what's in your crate. Are you playing, you know, top 40 track? What are you playing? What, what, what are you trying to uh, give? So I figured when I buy music, when I'm buying digital music and I've got millions and millions and millions of different song choices, I think I have a good ear for what I want to, to represent when I'm playing music. Um, good mixing ability is, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. Like, you being able to put two songs together without them sounding like shoes in a dryer. No pun intended. <laughs> you, we all know what shoes in a dryer sound like. Like, oh my God, what are you doing up there? And then being able to read a crowd is being able to like tell what they want. Like you're playing a few tracks and you see them jump in. Oh, I guess that's what they're feeling right now. So I want to play something that's similar to that, that it has that same vibe that they'll, they'll like. It's a give and take with, a, with an audience. What are you looking for from a good audience? I just like uh, some kind of reaction, like anything. That's so that's what I'm looking for. I'm just I'm not looking for like stagnant, stale audiences. I don't want people to be sitting around and just. I, I want like some kind of energy. Give me some. Give me some energy. That's all I'm looking for, really. Is some energy. And I'm not looking for requests. That's what I'm not. I tell you what I'm not looking for is requests, but people don't have club etiquette. What's club etiquette? Knowing what to do in the club, knowing like knowing that you're not supposed to. <laughs> Let me get my don't get me stabbing with this uh, toothbrush. I'll turn this into a shank. What you're not supposed to do is go up to the DJ and ask for like anything <laughs> um also i mean you know there are certain things that you you learn over time how to move through a club you're not supposed to bulldoze your way through a bunch of people like a bull in a china shop you're supposed to groove through you know that's all part of club etiquette and that can't be taught that's just something that <laughs> you're gonna have to experience would you say the pandemic has messed up club etiquette? Yes, yes, because, thank you. The people that are going out right now, they turned 21 in the pandemic and there was no going out. So now you got a big swath of people that are just going out for the first time and they, all together collectively have no idea of how to act in a, in a club or bar environment. And uh, they just act like bamboos, basically. 
And so, yeah, maybe they could have taken an online course or something in Club Attic <laughs> while the pandemic was <laughs> happening. Yeah, it's definitely messed up, uh, club, like in a, in, a, in a couple of different ways. You know, like first of all, most of the most of the clubs uh, closed. So that's definitely one way. And then a lot of DJs retired during that period. They were like, oh, I guess this is this is it. Would you consider yourself a sneakerhead? He, I wouldn't consider myself a sneakerhead, but I do know the importance of a good sneaker because here in the DMV, we dress from the foot up. I always know always pick out which shoe I like to wear first and then dress up from that. I got a few, I got a few sneakers at home that I love. Super glue or glue these back down. Why have you not bought a new pair of Hirachis? Probably because I just can't afford them right now. <laughs> and I, I, I love these shoes. I, my foot has, the shoe was molded to my foot. These are probably my most comfortable shoes that I own. And I like them. I like this 
dot matrix, whatever this is on the side. I like this pink Nike thing on the back. But yeah, I need to, I need to get some super glue and start putting these back together. <laughs> what size shoes do you wear? Uh, size, oops, size nine. Which are always the first shoes to go whenever you're looking for a pair of shoes. The size nines are the, the ones that go first. I guess it's the most common size. to be on tours as a DJ? <clears throat> it's not important to be on tour as a DJ, but it's important to me. You can be a very successful DJ um, playing locally. I can name a ton of DJs that are like local DJs or DJs that don't leave the, the area very often that are super successful but personally I like to get out of here I'm most happy when I'm going through an airport or going to the train station or packing or I love traveling so yeah it's definitely important to me I love how um, different crowds and different places react to music. And I'm gonna say, you know, I, I love DC, but sometimes you're, you know, sometimes your home team is, is not always going to root for you like <laughs> some other people that have never seen you, like fresh eyes, fresh ears rather. So I like to get out, even if it's just popping down to Richmond or going up to Philly, just I, I love getting out of the city. I'm not getting that on the lens. You just do what you gotta do. <laughs> Look at this. This must be gum. I don't know what this is. to build relationships in the cities that you've traveled to? Oh, absolutely. It's very important. Um, 
networking is important in general, but it's, it's great to build relationships with people in different places. Just as a person, you know, I love making new friends and, and meeting new people. But on the business side, yeah, it's super important. I love coming back and being asked to return to places that I've played. Like I have a whole family in Denver now. I, before I played in Denver a few years ago, I knew like a handful of people. And now I have like some really good friends out there that I talk to pretty often. How important is the bar scene in gay spaces? Um, it's important. Um, you know, we had, we have quite a few in DC, but it's not as important as it used to be. <clears throat> Tell um, me more. It used to be that you would find gay people in, in people that were gay um, in the bars. Now you can find them not in just gay spaces, but just everywhere in general, just because gay people are more openly accepted. We're, we all have a, a long way to go, but we are in general, in generally just more accepted. So you'll find gay people over at Players Club, even though it's not a gay space. And then on top of that, we have the apps. So if you're looking to hook up, <laughs> you don't even have to go to the gay bar anymore. You can just turn to your phone <laughs> and uh, meet someone that way, meet a gentleman caller or whatever. <laughs> so it's not as important or there, it's, it's important to have these spaces, but it's not as, uh, it's not what it was when it was like the only way to meet someone, meet people of your kind. When you said we have a long way to go, how so? <clears throat> I mean, there is homophobia out there wherever you go and we have a long way to go as far as being truly 100% accepted, which probably, I mean, realistically will never happen. But we have a, a long way to go from, you know, like people on U Street were just, you know, gay bash for holding hands and stuff like that. We, we you know, we got a long way to go as far as society in general being accepted. As you traveled the world, did you come across countries or states that handled that lifestyle better? Uh, well, Germany. Germany is definitely uh, progressive as far as the gay lifestyle <laughs> is um, as far as that goes um, states like California New York you know states where there are a lot of people in the LGBTQIA plus community. What's two pieces of advice you'd give your younger self? Hmm. 
two pieces of advice that I give my younger self, other than buy stock in Microsoft or Apple. <laughs> um, no, two pieces of advice really that I would uh, give myself earlier is learn how to produce earlier, which learn how to make music, which is something I'm still trying to figure out because that would put me on, on such a higher level as far as my DJing and my career goes. That's a personal thing. And uh, two is be better with your money. Be better with your money. That's something I've always struggled with, like keeping a dollar in my pocket. <laughs> Shit, those two, that, that's the advice I give myself now. <laughs> Learn how to be better with my money. It's a big one. How would doing work in music production take your career to the next level? Well, it used to be that you could just be a DJ and, and just go, and but it's, it's not enough. In order to really put your name out there, is you have to produce and make music for your name to have other DJs play your stuff. That's just the way it the way it works now. I'm not as uh, passionate about like making music right now. I rather just I like playing music. I like being out there and performing. And believe you me, not all producers should be DJing. You gotta tell me more after that. <laughs> I mean, a lot of producers make great music, but they don't know how to, like, perform it. They don't have that extra little bit to go out there and, and, and perform and play in front of a bunch of people. Bless their hearts. How would you break down the craft of performance? So it's three elements I was telling you about. Uh, music selection, being able to mix, and being able to read a crowd. I think those are the three, three things that you need. Oh man.
obviously I'm so hard on the shoes I should never wear or buy shoes that are white on the bottom you do a lot of walking I do I do you say you see me walking like, like you, you, see, you do a lot of walking <laughs> I, according to my let's see here Nah, I didn't walk that much today. <laughs> Maybe I'll walk from 8th Street on over to Northwest today in these new shoes. Just a nonchalant statement. <laughs> How do you feel about people having more access to DJing through technology? I think it's great. I, 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 I think everybody, if you really enjoy music, I think everybody should be able to, should be able to play it. But I also think that, you know, maybe you should practice in your dining room a month or two more before you. You know what? Scratch that. Whatever. Do, you do you. <laughs> you do you. I think this is a good time to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I don't want to hear you. No, I'll, I'll share my opinion. And this is coming from someone that really ran an establishment that had some of the best DJs in the city come through uh -huh. on the regular. There's a certain amount of work that does need to be put forth if you want an opportunity to work somewhere and mm -hmm. to become a thing. Mm -hmm. And as a DJ, I think music selection and transitions are very important. And transitions aren't just, these two songs are slow, so they should switch into each other. All right, what do the songs say? Mm -hmm. What story is being told in the set? What are the BPMs? Mm -hmm. How do you, what are the key parts of the song that you're looking for to make it transition smoothly. Mm -hmm. Can you connect the past to the present and make it make sense? Are you willing to do research like Harry Hotter when it comes to the samples and always have the sample for the new song that comes out 48 hours later? Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> those right. things are just a small amount of work that goes into being not a good DJ, but a credible DJ who's at least trying. Because you spinning on the ones and twos and having a turntable, I don't think that makes you a DJ. DJ is really a craft, like, when it comes to bartending. You know, do you know how to make a proper Manhattan? Mm -hmm. It's stuff difference? that you have to learn. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and practice. Yeah. And it's also things that you have to care about, whether the room is full or not. Are you willing to still create energy for yourself? and put on a good set, whether there's a thousand people in the room or two people in the room. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it about a check? Yes, it's always about the check. I'll never question, hey, you show up for that check, but you really do have to recognize and sometimes question, hey, is the reason other DJs aren't getting paid well because people like me are average or being accepted into the scene and is that affecting what the next person is able to make well yeah definitely um it, people are being undercut mm -hmm. um with new djs and stuff um, yeah and old stalwarts like me are <laughs> paying or playing for 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 less but you can't be mad at at the the young ones coming in mm -hmm. Just kind of work that much harder. What's it like doing work as a contractor? Uh, it's you have to be on top of your business. Uh, it is it is nice in the sense that you really don't have to answer to anyone when it comes to that. You are your own boss, which is it's so freeing. You decide what you do. And that's how I lived like up until the pandemic. I, I was a contractor all the way up until then. And now I've had to 
you know, take take some other gigs that are, you know, standard gigs where I have or, you know, what's the word? I have to I have had I have had to work for a boss. But yeah, I worked for as a my own contractor for, or as a contractor for several years. When I was working with Marvin, when I was working on the 18th Street Lounge, U Street, Flash, I was uh, working for myself. Are you? <laughs> hey, you doing a good job. What inspired you to want to become a DJ? It was that first time that I walked into a club. The first time I walked into tracks, I was like, oh, I had no idea. I've been to a school dance. I was very interested in the in the school dances and the DJ would come and play like music. I was like very into that. And then I went to the, the nightclub and they had lights and it was just so overwhelming. And I was like, oh, I, I have to do this every week. And then the raves I used to go to. So the first time I heard there was this DJ, her name was Michelle, Mar Michelle Maruski. She lives in uh, Oklahoma now. But the first time I got to hang out in the DJ booth with her, I was like, oh, she's killing it. This is exactly what I want to do. And so I just started buying vinyl. I used to work at Up Against the Wall in Georgetown. And right next door to Up Against the Wall was this record store called <clears throat> Bohemia Now, Music Now and Bohemia. That's what it was, Music Now and Bohemia, which turned into Yoshi Toshi. And I would spend my paychecks in that record store. I told you I couldn't hold on to a dollar. So now I've got like tons of records and no place to play them. And I just started doing house parties. And from there, it just snowballed into me playing in Southeast, The Edge and Nation and all those clubs. And then it became a steady job when I started working at Cobalt. I worked at Cobalt for almost 10 years. And then 18th Street Lounge and Marvin. Yeah, that's how I got started. And now I'm here. <laughs> Still doing it. That was 23 years ago. And my birthday is tomorrow. So, cancer? I'm a cancer, yeah. <laughs> I am a, definitely a cancer. How have you been able to continuously find love in DJing? You have to take a step back. I had to take a step back a few times. Um, right now I'm in one of those, like, I need to take a step back and I am taking a step back. But you gotta like, um, re, uh, what's the word? Uh, calibrate. Recalibrate, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta recalibrate. I'm always gonna love music, I'm always walking down the street listening to new mixes, or I'm always just amming something. <laughs> You never fall out of love with music. You just, sometimes you gotta step back from being out all the time. And that's Kansas, we like to be at home.
I think I did a pretty good job. I think you did a damn good job if you saw the before and after. Oh, there's going to be a before and after? <laughs> well, before is when it was dirty and oh, after yeah. is now that you've cleaned it. <laughs> hey. Before and after. Mm -hmm. I'm all bent up. Now that you've cleaned these shoes, how would you say you treat yourself in comparison to your everyday shoe? Oh, I would say I, I, I beat myself up just like these shoes. We all do. I beat, I, you know, I beat myself up. <clears throat> but, but I still look good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still functional, I still work. You know? In comparison to your everyday shoe, how would you say you treat yourself? In comparison to my everyday shoe, how would I treat myself? It's a deep question that I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out the give me give me a second. Take your time. I never really thought about that, but um, in comparison to my everyday shoe, how do I treat myself? Um, I do I like I said, I, I beat myself up. I never really sit down and, and all the time and, and take care of myself like I did today. Like I did with this shoe, like with these shoes. Um, but I, I keep going. I keep going, I'm here. <laughs> Like everybody, I'm I'm a little fucked up. <laughs> Look at these shoes. Look at this. I'm a little fucked up. A little beat up. You need, need a little super glue. But yeah, this is me at 48. These shoes represent me. <laughs> you look, you look great. <laughs> I've known you. I've been blessed to know you. I'd say from about 2013 to now, mm -hmm. and like you've probably grown two years older at most. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. seriously. I told my girl about it. I was like, he just he doesn't really age. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you won't know how old he is unless he tells you how old he is. I feel like going out at like and, and, and being in the club is like kept me youthful. I feel I really do feel that you would think it would it'd be the complete opposite. Like running yourself haggard, you're drinking yourself to death. You, but I feel like going out has like it's, it's saved me. I don't see myself doing anything else. I think it's kept me young. You age when you stop. You age when you stop, yes. Um, would you say you may have moments of finding it hard to let things go? Because instead of getting a replacement, I've heard you say multiple times, hey, we, we could just glue this back together. Or, or hey, look, this thing is broken, but we could always just, just clean it up. Right. I think the things that are really important to me, I don't have a problem. I, I, I keep them, but I don't have a problem letting frivolous things go. I'm, I'm good with a good cleanse. Yeah. But these shoes are important to me. I love these shoes. Um, 
Yeah. Do you remember the moment these shoes became important to you? Were they important before you purchased them? Or were they important after you got them and you realized there's so much value here? After. After. I think they just went with a lot of everything that I was wearing at the time. And still now. Definitely important. I feel like you're having a love letter moment with your shoes. I am. I never, really, I never really looked at these shoes like that, but yeah, I love these shoes. Maybe I'll get another pair in a different color, but I'll always, I think I'll keep these shoes. You should get these shoes framed. Get them framed. In one of those boxes, <laughs> the shadow boxes. Uh, maybe I will. Maybe I will put these somewhere important. So what does it take to walk a day in your shoes? <sighs> well, it's going to it's going to take a lot of it's going to take a lot of energy because I got to get up, I got to go to work. I have to um put music together. I have to make mixes. I have to this is all stuff that I have to do every day. I just got to take care of myself. And I'm usually walking there, <laughs> wherever I'm going. So that's what it takes to walk a day in my shoes. Just got to get up and do it. Is there ever a price that has to be paid for being the focus of fun? Yes, there is a price. Um, People feel like they can have access to you at all times, um, even when you're not working. People are always calling me up in the middle of the night. What are you doing? Like, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. I might be asleep. So, yeah, it, it, it does take some adjusting. Well, I'm, I'm used to it, but, you know, if you're getting into this game, be prepared to have people try to have access to you at all times. Have you ever had to work on setting those boundaries or did you come to the realization that I can't give people too much access to me because they'll take too much? Um, yeah, and it's taken me a long time to get to that point where I realized that, okay, I am giving a little too much of myself and I've had to pull back. I've had to pull back with several people. Yeah, well, what I'm usually giving people is my time. My time, and you can never get that back. And sometimes you give that time to the wrong people. Sometimes you give that time to people that aren't necessarily um, wanting to get close to you for the right reasons. So, yeah, it's something you definitely have to watch out for. What's the most beautiful thing you've come to realize about your community? Mm. Well, the people that I've surround myself with in the community love music, they love me, they love to dance. So that's the beautiful thing that wait. Man, all right, now I'm starting to <laughs> I'm starting to lose lose the questions, <laughs> lose the focus. <laughs> sorry, sorry. What's the beautiful thing you've come to realize about your community? best thing about my community is you know they on a selfish tip they they accept me for who I am and uh, they're all really great people like deep down you know you get a few bad eggs but for the most part like you know my community is supportive my community is um, looking out for each other um, yeah would you ever want to walk life in somebody else's shoes or are you happy that you've had a chance to be where you are? I'm very happy for the experiences that I have. So no, I definitely would not want to walk in someone else's shoes. I, I want to be Keenan or all day. So turning 48 
Are you I already am, 48? I am turning 48. I'll be 48 tomorrow. Do people get wise with age or do they choose to be wise and age gives them an opportunity to get there? I think everyone gets wiser with age. Everyone. You know, people tend to make the same mistakes and, you know, fall into the same things, like whether it be relationships, same, you know, and in, in, in repeating same patterns, but you know better. Deep down, <laughs> you know better. <laughs> age, age shows you a lot. I've learned so much. So, I mean, even last like four years, we all have been on a huge learning, <laughs> learning curve, I guess. Or we've all had to grow up a lot. So yeah, this is a day in my shoes.